exactly how you guys do today. I didn't hear Milky Tech, and it's been a minute, y'all. Whoo! If you guys only knew. I took a little break from social media, but now I am back, and we're doing a server build. Let's get this done. Alright, so the purpose of today's project is a business owner reached out to me. They wanted me to build for them a server where multiple employees can access and use the same software and everything can be still monitored. They're onboarding some virtual assistants to do these mundane tasks. Anywhere from video editing to social media posts to basic Excel and PowerPoint presentations. What we're going to do is we're going to build a PC powerful enough to handle two to three people working simultaneously video editing and crunching them words on word. The pros of this is it gives the owners control over who access their PC, what are they doing, making sure that they're actually doing the work that they are doing. And it saves on hardware instead of having to send out a laptop or you know a desktop to every single employee, they can have one server powerful enough to handle all that workload, splitting up all the resources evenly amongst all these users. The con is you have to split up all the resources. So let's go over some of the parts that we're going to use. The center of all this is a Ryzen 2700X. It's an 8 core 16 thread CPU. If we split it up two ways, we have a quad core with 8 threads, plenty of power. For the graphic card, we are using an NVIDIA EVGA RTX 2070. More than enough to accelerate those graphics so when we're rendering those videos, they render quickly. For the RAM, we are using Team Vulcan's 32 gigs. Split it two ways. I think they're all hiring two VAs, so split it two ways. You have 16 gigs for each PC. More than enough RAM. For storage, we have this 256 gig NVMe. Plenty of speed. And we have these two residential green three terabyte drives. We're gonna run it in RAID 1 for redundancy. For this power supply, we have this Corsair CX500. It is 80 plus bronze. It's more than enough power to power the system. Yeah, we got all these cables here. It's not modular, but hey, this is a server, so who cares? It's gonna be hidden under a box somewhere. All these parts are connected to this motherboard, which is the Gigabyte Aorus B450. And we gotta keep the CPU cool. We're using this deep cool Gamex 400 V2. Should keep it cool enough. And to host all these PC parts, we are using the Corsair Obsidian 350D case. It's a more than enough space, plenty of cooling, and hey, it does the job, houses everything. The beautiful thing about this project is you don't have to use all new hardware. Uh, you can always recycle all the hardware. My client recently upgraded his PC and he had extra parts lying around. Instead of them going to waste, we're recycling and reusing them. So let's put the server together. Space.
the server is built, let's download all the software we need to get it up and running. All right, so our first step is we have to download Proxbox. So we go to proxbox.com, click on downloads, and then we click on Proxbox virtual environment, and we want to download the ISO. Click on ISO, and we'll download the latest version, which is version 7.2. And hit download, and uh, I've already downloaded it, so uh, let's move on to the next step. Our next step is we need to mount the ISO to a flash drive. And in this case, I'm using Blanca Etcher. I find this one uh, pretty easy to use. So let's download it as I've already downloaded and I've installed it. And so let's mount it. While we wait for everything to download and install, one thing I like to do is I like to pull up the IP information for my computer. This way my computer can connect to the server without any problem. So you pull up CMD command prompt and then you just type in IP config. And once you type in IP config and all the IP addresses pop up I like to take a little snapshot of it this way I have the information ready in hand so when I need it it's there now that everything has been downloaded and installed let's mount our flash drive so plug in your flash drive select your ISO select the target flash drive hit select and flash and this way I've already done it but you click that and it's just pretty much automatic all right so now the next step is plug your flash drive in Turn on your server and let's get into the BIOS. Now that we're in the BIOS, let's just reset the settings, load the optimized defaults. Now let's go back and change our settings. Set up our XMP profile, the maximum performance to the BIOS to set up uh, boot priorities. I forgot to plug in my USB, which is fine. But with this motherboard, you just hit F11 and it'll take you into the boot manager. You really don't have to set up boot priorities for here, but if you have to, you can set it up so that it will boot from USB first. Now let's go set up our FTPM. This way, if you want to install Windows 11, you can install Windows 11. The next setting we want to enable is IOMMU. If you ever wanted to do GPU pass through so that you could make use of your graphic card on your VM, you will have to have this setting enabled. All right, so let's hit F10 and save our configuration and reboot so that we could get into our Proxmox installer. The grub has loaded. All right, now that we're in our installer, let's hit install Proxmox. All right, don't forget to get your daily dose of EULA. Read it, comprehend it, understand it, and I agree. Let's move on. All right, our next step is to select the hard drive that we're going to install it on. I'm going to put it on a RAID 1 array between my two watts of digital drive. This way, if we do have a failure of one of the drives, we'll have a redundancy. In order to create a RAID array, you want to click on Options, then under File System, click on the drop down and select ZFS RAID 1, and then select your two drives. All right, so the next step you want to do is select your country, your time zone, and your keyboard layout. As for me, it's going to be United States, and we're going to go America, New York, since I'm on the Eastern Time Zone, and U.S. English. Isn't that now you want to set up your password, confirm your password, and set up your email. And now we got to set up our host name, our IP address, our gateway, and our DNS server. Remember that snapshot that we took earlier? That's where those numbers come in handy. So now let's plug them in. All right, so let's change our hostname to proxmox.nukitech.local. For some reason, Proxmox doesn't like to uh, detect my computer's IP address. Maybe it's because I have too many devices on the network, so this can't detect the right one. So that's when we took a picture of IP config information, and now let's plug it in. For some reason, I thought it would be cool to have a IPv6. Let's just put the easier IPv4 address in. The next thing that we want to change is the gateway and DNS server IP address. These addresses need to match the address that's on my PC, so let's fix that really quick. With all that set up, let's hit next. Okay, so this network is not valid. Looks like my net mask number is a little bit too high. So let's change that to like uh, 18 and hit next. And here's a summary of our settings. If I were you, I would take a picture of this or a screenshot of this and keep it for your record. As you would need that IPCIDR, you will need that to log into your server. All right, let's hit install and watch it install. <laughs> A 
successful install of Proxmox. Now let's switch to your computer, log in to this address here, and let's set it up. So let's log into our server via that IP address. So let's plug it in, and it's gonna give you this. The connection is not private, and it's fine, it's because it doesn't have the security injected into it. Just proceed anyways, and our login would be root, which is the default login, and whatever password you put in, and there we go, we're logged in. Don't worry about no valid subscription, the software is free to use, but if you want extra support, you can always get a subscription service through them. And now, let's set up our server. Under data center, you want to click on storage, and now what we want to do is we want to set up our storage so that it is compatible with basically anything we want to do with whether it's upload ISOs or set up containers or set up VMs. This way we make it very versatile. And now you just select them all. And now I'll do it for both storage devices. All right, now, so what we want to do now is we want to upload our ISOs. So in order to do that, you want to go to a local PVE. This does for me. And then click on ISO image and then upload. And then search file. And now you can search your computer and add whatever uh iso you want for me i'm going to upload a couple of isos windows 10 windows 11 and a driver's iso and now we have to install a whole bunch of dependencies so let's just click on shell and i'll have this all in a nice little word document so that you just have to copy and paste well the first dependency we want to set up is the iommu in order to do that we will use a nano command nano dash etsy dash default dash grub and now we'll look for the linux default equals quiet so we'll just go down there and then if you have an intel in the quotation after quiet you just add intel underscore iommu equals on if it's amd you'll just put amd instead of intel now we hit Control o to output and Control x to exit. Alright, so let's update the grub. Should take a few seconds. So next we want to add our VFIO modules. In order to do that, we need to go to nano dash etc modules. And we're going to add these uh, following command lines. VFIO, VIFO, IMMU type 1, PCI, and VIRQFD. We add that, then Control o to output and Control x to escape. And now let's add this line so that we can allow unsafe interprets. And let's add this last KVM echo command. And now I'm going to blacklist some of the drivers. I know I'm using only an NVIDIA card. However, I do have a Radeon card lying around and I might slap it in there later on. So blacklist all the drivers. And what happens when we blacklist the drivers, it tells the whole system to not use any of the GPU. This way we can set it up in Windows or another OS. The next thing that we want to do is we want to figure out our vendor ID. In order to do that, we want to use this one command, lspci-v. And now we want to look for our uh, video card. And in this case here, we can see that our video card is at quote unquote 7 o'clock. And we're going to keep that number because we're going to I use another command uh, so that we could get its ID and then integrate the ID into the VFIO. And that command is a similar command to the first command that we used. It is ls pci dash n dash s and whatever number, in my case, 07 colon 00. And it gave us a whole bunch of IDs. So we're going to copy all these IDs and we're going to input it into this next command. And it is a long one. Just copy and paste it and then type all these in. And after that, we're going to update and then restart the server. The update might take a little while, depending on how fast your computer is. It might take a good 15, 20, 30 seconds. You could either type in reset and hit enter and that will reboot or press the reboot button on the top right. Now that we have rebooted the server, let's set up our virtual machine. All right, so let's set up our VM. So let's go up there, click on Create VM, and let's just give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it VM for VAs, Virtual Machines for Virtual Assistant. I think it's a pretty, pretty nice name. I don't want to start all the time, so start on boot. And uh, yeah, I'm going to Next, and let's select our ISO. I'll be doing Windows 11. And then we'll just make sure we select the right type. And our version is 11.22. So we're good. So we'll hit next. All right. So now we'll set up our system. We'll keep the graphic as default. That as is as it is. Vert IO SCSI. And now we'll select our storage. We'll select the local. Seems to be pressing all the buttons. 
Okay, so now let's go next. All right, so next step is we want to set up our disk. So I'm going to give us about a terabyte of storage. Plenty of space, and we're going to make sure our bus type is SCSI. All right, so let's go next and set up our CPU. I'm going to give this virtual machine eight cores, and uh, yeah, everything else looks about right. Go next. For the RAM, I'm going to give 16 gigs. And for the network, I'm just going to switch the module to Vert IO. All right, so let's go next and confirm our settings and hit finish. And I'll give it some time for it to set up and the virtual machine should be ready soon. All right, so that our future self will love us. Let's enter a few more commands. Obviously, you need to put in the right command for this code to work. The VID is number 100 for here. So whatever the ID put there, that's the one that you use. Now we're going to input a few more commands. At the bottom of this list, we'll paste in these few lines. And since we're running Windows 11, we don't need machine Q35 since it's already Name, but if you're running Windows 10, you can just leave that, it'll be fine. Yeah, that looks good. We'll hit Control O and then Control X, and we should be ready to install Windows in our VM. All right, so let's start up our VM. Let's click on 100 and then go to console and hit start. Or you can go ahead and hit the start button up there, it will turn it on. Everything is done well, it should just boot directly from the flash drive. And it boots! To get into our flash drive, or I guess into our ISO, and it did. Alright, installing Windows should be a breeze. But there's a few things that we have to do, so let me show you how to do them. <laughs> As you can see, there is no hard drive. That's because the control drivers are not there. So we'll go to hardware and then we'll click on the CD drive, not the hard drive, the CD drive. And then we'll switch our ISOs out for the virtual win ISO drivers. And then we'll go back to console. And now we'll load the drivers. We'll just hit OK. And we'll just go for the pass through for Windows 11, AMD 64. Hit next. And it will take care of it, so we'll install all the drivers. We can see our hard drive. It's right there. And now let's go back to back out to put the Windows 11 ISO back in there. There we go. And now it's business as usual. virtual machine is running windows 11 ha and you can run windows 11 on any hardware nowadays now let's install our internet drivers because we don't have internet and we can remote in oh no so let's switch out the isos and put back the driver iso and we'll just hit ok go back to the console and connect the NC it detected it so now we'll need to go to device manager and we'll just click on the ethernet controller hit update drivers and let's browse for drivers we'll browse again and we'll go down We'll go to our CD drive and we'll scroll down to NetKVM and scroll down to Windows 11. Hit OK and hit Next. If we'll find it and install the driver, we we'll close. Boom! We got internet. I guess one more last thing, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Let's uh, go into settings and let's enable remote desktop so we can actually remote in. Type in into the search remote. Pop right up there, remote desktop settings. Let's turn it on. Boom, done. Now we can remote in. Awesome. And that does it for today's video. Overall, it's not too bad of a process. Some things to look out for are a problem with the ISO, so make sure that the source that you get the ISO from is great. Otherwise, it might not work too well, so keep that in mind. In the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a GPU pass-through and how to 
split up your GPU. So it's going to be a GPU centric video. Reason why we're doing that is, you know, you maybe want to have two players, one PC and one GPU. So hey, I know the price of GPU have come down now, but still, you might have one beefy graphic card that can rule them all. So you can use that. Or, you know, you might want to do your work virtually, you know, carry a nice light laptop and then just remote in whenever you need to and crunch them videos out, do 3D rendering and all that awesome work without having to carry all this with you. Stay tuned for that video. If you guys enjoyed this content, smash that like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you get notified when I release my next video. If you guys have a question, a comment, or want to say hello, what's up? Drop it in the comments below and I will see you guys next time. Peace.